YouTube, what's going on? Era of Carthage here. As promised at the end of my last video, I told you I had another one I wanted to show you, and this is it. It's gonna be a little different. This is an FFA. It's gonna be medium funds. They were obviously trying to like keep things interesting, maybe keep the unit count down for performance sake, but you know, probably more, I don't know, maybe, maybe it was just there to make the unit selection a little more interesting. So we got Alethanar. He is supporting several sisters of Avalorn. There's just a couple of spears. And then there's a single Illyrian Reaver out here. Uh, there is a Handmaiden in here supporting Alethanar. And then got some more Illyrian Reavers. The Greenskins are going to have uh, Skarsnik, a Ragnarok Queen, and Orc Shaman. But deploying through the woods are going to be several units of Night Goblins and Night Goblin Archers. So it's going to be an interesting Greenskin army. Now for Chaos, which is the uh, army coming through the woods here, just the Ever Chosen two exalted uh heroes and then there are a couple of knights with lances so a tiny army for chaos and i will get to the dwarf army here momentarily but archaeon is going to make a crazed full-on frontal assault against the high elves and i do say crazed because there are several units of sisters of Avalorn being supported by two units that buff up their damage to a considerable degree uh, look at that, 40 damage, so yeah, it's, this is this is a questionable move at best, but Archaon thinks he can get in here and knock them all out with a burning head. He does do some, uh, some pretty serious damage, but unless he can get past the Spearmen, uh, his units are going to get chewed up pretty quickly in a hail of fire from some very deadly units. The decoy for Aletha Nara is up. Archaon is already down to half health, trying to plow his way through this. He is using um, some buffs here they are going to make him pretty deadly, but... He's not able to stay focused on any one given target, and not all of the Sisters of Avalorn can be tied down. And he is in some very serious doo-doo right now. Now the Dwarf Army is still on the way over, so don't worry, I'll get to it. It's Grom Brindle, Runesmith, some infantry units, Flame Cannon, and Iron Drakes. It should be an interesting ad. So this desperate fight is really heating up. <laughs> Boy, that was lame. Um, as lame as the new Star Wars movies. <laughs> oh, zing! Anyway, so yeah, things are getting hot here, and Archaon gets pushed out of the fight. The Knights with Lances are a little bit late to the show, and uh, it may be too late to save Archaon from his uh, fate. He's getting pushed out rather quickly. Now, at this point, the Night Gobbos... Ooh, stompy! <laughs> the Orc Shaman drops a nasty foot on these Knights with Lances. And the Illyrian Reavers, a pretty nice call. Archaon is just continuing to be in big trouble. But now the Greenskins have arrived and are picking up the scraps of this fight while the High Elves are busy. Not a lot of infantry here for the Greenskins and just a few archers and the Arachnorok Queen. Now remember, Arachnorok Queen can summon up some uh, spider hatchlings, which can be quite useful. Archaon is routed. He's very near the edge of the map with only 473 hit points. So he is clinging to life. And now the fight between the Greenskins and the High Elves will get underway. Skarsnik and his Orc Shaman and Spider Hatchlings are trying to get busy here while the High Elves fall back knowing that they're potentially about to be flanked by the Dwarves. And speaking of Dwarves, here they are. Got some Warriors and Longbeards up front with Grombrindle. He's got his Runesmith on the other flank. Here's the Iron Drakes. More Longbeards. And then we've got some Slayers in the back with the Flame Cannon. Now the Flame Cannon does have Quite a few targets to try and take advantage of here. The dwarf is very late to the fight and will have a difficult time trying to put himself back in, especially considering the high elf player has jumped off to such an early lead here. So the spider hatchlings coming in after the dwarves helping to stop them. They were probably maybe trying to get past that fight to the artillery, but it's not going to happen. You can see the iron drakes starting to uh, burn some spiders. That's the best kind of spider, is a burned spider. Those those dwarves know exactly the way I feel. You can see that there is just a massive crossfire here for the Greenskins as they find themselves between a wall of flame and just really a brutal barrage from the, the Sisters of Avalorn who are raining absolute death all over everything that comes within their considerable range. So now the spider gets into combat along with the Night Goblins. The Night Goblins not going to be doing great against the dwarves. A little bit of support from Skarsnik and Spider. They may have a chance, but the Spider's taking fire. The Flame Cannon is unleashing it and uh, definitely getting some kills. If you take a look, you're already 90 kills on the Flame Cannon. Now the Chaos Knights, they're back. But they end up in the Spears instead of the Sisters. Instead of taking a long way around, trying to get in behind those Sisters, they end up in the, in the Spears. 
There's going to be another burning head. Archaeon was able to get back close enough to the fight to try and take advantage of both the Greenskins and the Dwarves. So, folks, we well and truly have a good old-fashioned FFA going on here. Archaeon, though, is just clinging to life at only 218 hit points, and he is dangerously close to Alethanar and a Handmaiden. And he goes down in a barrage of fire from the Sisters of Avalorn. So Droghar and the Slayer of Kings was slain, but not by kings. So at least he didn't completely, you know, give up his name there. We see the two exalted heroes overmatched now. And so we have an interesting fight going on between the Greenskins and the Dwarves. And the Greenskins are in a bit of trouble here. The Iron Drakes have been able to keep their distance and fire away. They don't have a ton of chevrons yet. They're really not getting great work done against the spider. Uh, they need a better target, but it's, at the same time, they're not wanting to move too far away uh, from their support. But yeah, a little bit dangerous here because now they're, they've got a move order that's bringing them forward. That spider is now fighting Grombrindle. Grombrindle should do pretty well against the spider. The spider will certainly do damage to him too. So this is going to be a tough fight, and remember the spider's poison too, so that also won't be going so well for Grom Brindle. The flame cannon's still firing, still getting kills, though I do question whether the Sisters of Avalorn might have been a better target here. But the Sisters are low on ammo, so perhaps trying to get rid of these Gobbo Archers that are closer and have more ammo does make more sense. And do remember the flame cannon does imbue the burnt um, debuff, which takes away leadership. That's a considerable number of kills on the Flame Cannon. Not the most I've ever seen, but it's quite a lot. So between the Runesmith, <laughs> Crombrindle is really having some arachnophobia right now. This is not where he wants to be in life. Underneath a giant spider queen. Sure she'll fill him full of eggs at any moment. You can see here that the Sisters of Avalorn trying to get after those uh, Iron Drakes, and they should. The Iron Drakes are a considerable threat to everything's left. And hey, speaking of flame cannons and sisters, <laughs> there goes a few. So the flame cannon has definitely been firing at, I would say, some good targets. A little bit of infantry to start with, then archers. So definitely viable targets. But the dwarves are losing their infantry, and Grombrindle was uh, given a little too much love by the Arachnorok Queen and eventually taken out. These uh, Iron Drakes have been targeting the uh, Arachnorok Queen most of the time. It's just not been working out great for them. There's enough armor on that Arachnorok Queen. Against infantry, this will work, but um, the Queen, not so much. She's got a lot of armor, and it's just taken a very long time to get the damage done. It will do it, but it takes a long time. Now, at this point, the Sisters have moved forward, and they are after the Flame Cannon. But the sisters are running out of ammo. In fact, they pretty much are out. You've got one unit here that's got a single volley left, and they're not targeted on uh, the unit that um, I would have expected, which would have been the flame cannon, because it still has six volleys and the potential to do some more damage. Right now, it's targeting the spearmen, which is dangerously close to the slayers, but I can see where there wants to be some support there. 212 kills, picked up a chevron on the flame cannon, so probably money well spent. The Longbeards and Iron Drakes finally managed to get rid of the Arachnorok Queen over here, but not before she left a brood of spider hatchlings. And it leaves us in a pretty interesting fight. Pretty interesting fight. You can see Skarsnik is still in near-perfect health, chasing off a Runesmith, and he's got some Gobbo Archers. Those Gobbo Archers are going to find themselves in a bit of a fortuitous situation now. Because they have ammo, and there's very few people to stop them. The Handmaiden was driven back by the Slayers. They are used to slaying disgusting beast. Not really their task here. Handmaiden, uh, I wouldn't uh, think that the term disgusting applies to her, <laughs> but they defeated her nonetheless, so does that fulfill their Slayer Oath? I guess so, right? As long as they die doing it. Now, the spider came back, and a little more fire should send the spider packing. The leadership is going to be low, but it still manages to get a charge in, and that's going to hurt these Iron Drakes considerably. So the Dwarves are going to be reeling after that one. The Gobbo Archers, some of them starting to run low on ammo. There's some Spider Hatchlings that'll dissipate soon because they won't go on forever. And then Skarsnik should do fine in this Infantry Blob. He's anti-large, but with the poison and plenty of armor-piercing damage, I think Skarsnik will do well. Dwarves don't do particularly good in these kind of fights. They just don't have a lot of attack. The High Elves have chosen to kind of sit back and regroup uh, after they go after the flame cannon. Now, Sisters of Avalor are going to be pretty decent in this late game here. 
The Handmaiden did come back, and Aletha Nar is just clinging onto life at 72 hit points. Um, but, I mean, it's going to be an interesting fight to the finish here. Another brood of Spider Hatchling gets out just in time here from the Arachnorok Queen, so that's pretty clutch because she's about to get burned straight off the battlefield. Takes a pretty nasty shot there. I don't know, though. Her leadership stabilized, even with the burnt effect. And Boy, check out Skarsnik over here creating a blob for his uh, goblin archers to get some work done. And then there was uh, Runesmith over here that they were also able to clean up, so Goblin Archer is getting some important work done. Let's just kind of take a look at what's around here. Should be about it. So for the Dwarves, it doesn't look good. Looks like this is going to come down, and I mean, honestly, with Skarsnik and the health he is, it's not looking bad at the greens, uh, for the Greenskins at all. Not looking bad at all. These um, Gobbo Archers are some prime targets right here. If these... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, they move just in time. Those Goblin Archers just saved themselves from a one-shot Annihilation. And then they're managing to open fire on the Iron Drakes. The Iron Drakes need to fall back. Uh, they definitely don't want to stay in a shooting war here with these uh, Goblin Archers. But if they would have gotten that flank shot off, it would have been beautiful. When you get a flank shot off with the uh, Iron Drakes, it is just devastating. Like, absolutely devastating. It's already still pretty good here. There goes a full-on route because of the decoy from Aletha Nar. Look at Skarsnik. Just tanking this battle. The decoy, uh... <laughs> I think that's the decoy picking up the kills. No, the decoy just has 47 kills with that shot. Holy mackerel. It's actually counting the kills on the decoy. That was incredible. No, no, no. No, 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 never mind. It was just the kills on Elite Denara. Whoa, man, that had me, like, psyched out for a minute. I was like, wow, that was a heck of an arrow that he plugged through there. Bad news, everyone. If you like Iron Drakes, they're about to die. They do have some armor, which will help them, but these sisters are uh, more than up for this fight in melee. A few spider hatchlings left. The arachnophobia never ends on this battlefield. Are they? Oh, they're going to go for Elite. Will they get him? He's got so very little hit points. Is he going to get killed by the spiders? Oh, it's going to be close because they're almost gone. Oh, all they have to do is just get a couple of bites in and he's toast. Oh, they routed him. They did it. I mean, I don't blame you for running Aletha Nara. I would run away from a brood of spider hatchlings. That's just terrifying. I'm going to see Skarsnik just take off running from the Sisters of Avalor, he probably wouldn't win that fight. He just doesn't have the armor, I don't think, to, uh, to tank that one out. The Sisters are going to be pretty decent. It looks like he's going to take off, and he wants to finish Aletha Nar. Let's fast forward for a minute, because there is going to be a bit of a foot chase here, like old school style. The Dwarves did get a few Iron Drakes and some Longbeards back from routing, and Skarsnik is being just constantly harassed by Sisters of Avalor. But this guy is amazingly fast. All things considered here, at only 34 speed. He's keeping up much better than I would expect, but now he's outflanked. However, here he ends up in a fight with just one Sister of Avalorn, so this becomes somewhat advantageous for him. Got spite of the bad mood, using get back here, everything he can to keep his leadership up, but Skarsnik is starting to get singled out, and Aletha Nara should be able to stay away from him. So we'll just take a look here. Skarsnik, his Prada, and his little pet or his big nasty pet. <laughs> yeah, so Skarsnik's gonna go down. He won't be able to hold it together. He's down to 500 hit, 15 hit points, and I just, I don't know that he can get away. He shouldn't be able to get away from the sisters. It doesn't look like he will, so that leaves a very depleted Aletha Nar to face off against four Iron Drakes, and 24 Longbeards, so this one is going to come down to the wire. If the Dwarves win, I don't know exactly how the bonus score works, but I would think that they would win for good. But Skarsnik here is not finished either, and he's not being chased. That would have been a good roll for Aletha Nar here, unless he's got a decoy ability left, but uh, Aleth could have chased off Skarsnik and finished him, especially considering that he has pretty solid speed here. But we're going to see Slippery from Aletha Nar. That's a big risk. He could have been shot and killed there by the Iron Drakes, I think. But the Iron Drakes instead go for the Sisters of Avalorn. Yeah, I feel like maybe he should have gone for Aletha Nar. But I don't know if you can stop both Sisters 
with just the one long beard. So this may be a somewhat untenable situation. Yeah, and Skarsnik did come back. And that leaves the uh, Iron Drakes now unguarded. They're going to maybe get one more shot before they're charged by the sisters. The sisters will finish them. And so that means this battle's going to come down pretty close here. I wonder if Skarsnik can... Nope, he routed, so he can't hold together his leadership. So it's not likely that Skarsnik will end up back in this fight. And that just leaves the sisters to mop up a few of these Longbeards. And although they're not good against armor, they'll be able to do this. They'll be able to pull this one off, especially with the leadership of Elite and R nearby. Kind of keeping them in the fight. It is incredible that Elite and R is even alive right now. What an epic fight, folks. Epic fight. You gotta love some flame armies from the dwarves. And a uh, really interesting battle here, this one, because of the medium funds. It led to interesting army picks and what I thought was pretty entertaining gameplay. <laughs> Coming in like all Legolas style here. Oh, Skarsnik is back in. He is trying to keep himself ready for a fight. I just don't think he can finish it, though. If he had the Prodder ability, it'd be amazing. He probably would win. Anyway, he wasn't able to get back into the battle, and uh, it will be a defeat for the dwarf player who submitted it. But Bax, thanks for sending this in. Richie, Ab Abhorga uh, Abharash, and Felagrum, thank you all for playing. Thanks for picking some fun armies and sending this one in. I enjoyed this one. I hope you all enjoyed it at the same time. We haven't seen a lot of FFA, so I figured this would be kind of a fun uh, extra to throw in here. Felt like it was entertaining in the sense that it was a little different than usual. A lot of FFAs just result in giant vortex blob bashes, and that's fun. Don't get me wrong, I kind of enjoy that, but this one was interesting since the armies were a little smaller and um, the elite units could really come out to shine in a way with that going on. But anyway, hope you all enjoyed this one. Air of Carthage signing out for now. Do appreciate you being here. If you want to, please leave a comment. Tell me what you think. If you liked it, feel free to hit the like button. And if you feel the opposite, like a flaming hatred, Make sure you hit that dislike button and then tell me why I stink in the comments. I will see you next time. Out.